throughout the course of an evening like this, there are so many opportunities to look elsewhere. Yeah, that cell phone. <laughs> to look elsewhere. And all I want you to do is whenever you find that happening tonight, I just want you to bring your attention back to the Lord. So what I've discovered, more than preparing sermons, God wants to prepare my heart. And what He wants more than anything is my full attention. And so if we can do that collectively as a family, there's no limit to what the Lord will do among us and who He will be to us. Amen? All right, come on, lift your hands to heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, we come tonight thankful, looking to you, amazed that we can come to you every moment of every day by the precious blood of Jesus. And so, Lord, we lift our hands tonight in worship, and we adore you and love you, and we give you honor, and we're grateful, Lord. We come tonight through the front door, through the gate of thanksgiving. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your word that you honor above your own name. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your promise. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your good heart. Thank you for being good. Thank you, Lord, in advance for many who will receive Jesus tonight, for many who will come back to Jesus tonight, for many who will be made whole and healed, for many who will fall deeply in love with you. Now glorify the name of Jesus, wonderful Holy Spirit. Have our lives, use our lives. We've come for you and you alone. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen.
Just one chief and two men's purpose And one thing reason for existence All men's vain and high ambition Will one day be quiet Just let me 
Oh 
to look at Jesus. Start singing your song. Start singing your song. Start pouring your love. Pour your love. Pour your love.
Just sing to the Lord a bit here. Come on, lift your voice. Just softly. Worthy. Holy, holy, holy.
just sing in the spirit here for about 30 seconds. Oh 
Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Keep worshiping everyone. Don't stop, don't stop. There's nowhere to go. The Lord is reaching out to many of you now. We're here in His glory. If you feel the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit coming on you right now and you know in the depths of your soul you need Jesus to change your life tonight to set you free from sin to cleanse you to break the power of the devil in your life come come one by one I don't need to preach to you right now come come right here in his presence get out of your seat come in the presence of the Lord to this loving Jesus Keep worshiping, church. Keep worshiping. If you know, you feel the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, come now. Come now in this precious presence of the Lord. It's Jesus that changes lives. To the addicted tonight, come to Jesus. 
the broken, the broken, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Young and old, come to the Lord. She's a holy moment. Holy Spirit, do the work, do the work, do the work. I can tell you on the authority of God's word. You will not interrupt me while I'm talking. Keep coming. I can tell you on the authority of God's word that if you come to Jesus tonight, you will be free. If you come to Jesus tonight, you will leave brand new. And he will by no means reject you if you come to him tonight. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father. He's here tonight. He's here. There's no shame. No shame at this altar. Only redemption. Only freedom. Don't stay in your sin. Choose life tonight. Choose Jesus. Respond to his love. Respond to his love. Keep playing there behind me, guys, on the keys. There are people here repenting, coming to the Lord. Listen to me, everyone in the room. There is no one like Jesus. No one. That woman caught in adultery came to him. Religion said, kill her, stone her. But Jesus had other plans for her. He said, woman, where are your accusers? She said, nowhere, Lord. She said, Neither do I, he said, neither do I accuse you. Jesus isn't in the room to accuse you tonight. Many of you in the room feel like your sin is under a microscope. That's not accusation. That's the light of the Holy Spirit. And men choose darkness, the Bible says, so that their sin won't be seen. In this moment, you're in the light of God, in the light of his presence. And you have the choice tonight to live with your sin or to live free from sin. As though you've never sinned a day in your life. Sin's power has been broken and dealt with by Jesus. So I want to speak to everyone under the sound of my voice. Do you feel accused tonight? Like that woman caught in adultery, you say, I haven't committed adultery. Jesus said, if you lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. Hosea said that we've all played the harlot by looking in another direction. Come to Jesus tonight. And he'll look at your accuser. And he'll look at you and say, neither do I accuse you. Come to the one who will not accuse you tonight, right now. If you need Jesus to set you free completely from sin, get out of your seat and get down here right now. I'm telling you, this is a special night. I sense the heavy weight of God's presence. Young and old, you might be a Jesus school student. I don't know who you are. You may, maybe you come to this church often. Come down tonight and find your freedom. Thank you, Father. Come, come, come. Come, religion kills, religion accuses. Jesus sends the accuser away. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Lose the chains. Lose the burden of sin. 
You see, you know why they're coming tonight? Because the Lord's presence is so real here. They're coming to Him. Come, come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus tonight. Come. God bless you. Come. 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 You know what keeps men and women from redemption in moments like this? Fear of man. Shame. Condemnation. Jesus isn't here to shame you. He's here to redeem you. God bless you. He's here to redeem you. Come. You know your sin is destroying your heart. That's what it does. It brings death. And you know you don't want it anymore. Come. Come. They're still coming. This is beautiful. Such a gentle Jesus. Such a wonderful Jesus. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Come. Come. You for, need to forget about everyone next to you. Because one day you'll stand before the throne of God. And all that will matter will be the work of the Lord in your life. Not your own works, not your own abilities. Nothing you think you've accomplished, but the accomplishment of Jesus. And when you come to Him, His accomplishment is given to you. The Father sees Jesus when He looks at you. This is a beautiful, beautiful moment, but I feel that more, more, God, Jesus has more. There's more on His heart. Step out of your porn tonight. Step out of your addiction tonight. Step out of it. Step out of it. Leave it. Leave the drug addiction. Leave the anger. Leave the hatred. Leave it all. Leave it all and come to the Lord Jesus. Look, they're coming young and old. They're coming, little children coming to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. This is what the Holy Spirit does. They're still coming. Um, Jesus said, speaking of the Holy Spirit, He will bear witness of me. That's the work of the Spirit. You know, and sometimes He moves quickly. The gentleman that He is never beats the door down. Respond to His loving pool, you and your homes. You may tune in every, every week. I want to invite you to come to Jesus tonight. Come to the Lord. Children, you might be watching this tonight with your family. And there's something about this moment that just feels so real. You feel the pull of the Lord on your heart. That's the Holy Spirit. I believe that many homes around the world tonight are being saturated with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Respond, respond. I believe there's many marriages that are broken and fractured that seem hopeless tonight as you're watching. Maybe here in America or somewhere around the world. Jesus is the third fold in the court of God. He's the, he's the third cord in God's marital plan. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus tonight. Leave your sin with Jesus tonight. He'll nail it to the cross. Many of you come every week. You can't glory in coming every week. You want to glory in Him. Come to Jesus tonight. I don't understand the ways of God. I only know that nights like this are special. Hallelujah. If you are there watching in your homes, I want you to get on your knees tonight if you're coming to the Lord. And we're all going to pray together. Aren't you grateful that Jesus has overcome? That Jesus 
won the war. It is finished, he said. Hallelujah. Ryan, come stand up here with me, buddy. They're still coming to the Lord. They're still coming. You see, the Holy Spirit is a person. The wind, he comes at certain times, a, a river, a stream, sometimes like fire. He came so many ways tonight. Right now, I, I sense the gentle, loving river of the Holy Spirit, just singling many of you out. What a precious, patient Lord to wait on us this long. But here he is. What an offering. I want everyone who came forward. Do you know what's so special about tonight? Is that the Lord is here. And when you talk to him tonight, he's going to hear you. I promise you he's going to hear you. So I want everyone who came forward and everyone in the house tonight to pray and declare this clearly. And what we're about to pray awakens heaven. Heaven is celebrating right now. When one sinner repents, all of heaven rejoices. Look at this moment. And what we're about to pray also sends a shockwave, a quiver through hell as souls are being pulled from the grip of the enemy for eternity Jesus has overcome he has no rival I said he has no rival he has no rival I want us to pray this and pray it out loud realizing there is no redemption in a prayer there is redemption in a person I want you to talk to a person right now and he will gladly receive you are you ready family what a precious moment. I want everyone in their seats to stretch their hands. And I want, first, I'd like you to stand if you're not and stretch your hands towards these precious people in the moment. For those of you who've come forward, I want you to lift your hands as a sign of offering your life to God forever. Pray this out loud. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you and I confess my sin. You said, if I would confess my sin, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So here I am, Lord Jesus, coming to you as you told me to confessing my sin forgive me wash me in the precious blood of Jesus cleanse my soul redeem my life I repent of my sin I turn from it and turn directly to you I put all my trust in you and you alone, Jesus Christ, I give you my life. I believe that you lived a perfect and sinless life. And I believe that you suffered and died to purchase my soul. And I believe that you were buried and raised again because you are the Son of God who has been raised from the dead and you are alive forevermore. Jesus, you have ascended to the right hand of the Father and you are seated and enthroned as King of Kings. And you are returning again to rule and reign. Dearest Jesus, Receive me tonight as I receive you. Me for you. You for me. Forever. Forever. Amen. In Jesus' name.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, just thank him one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want Ryan to talk to you just for uh, uh, two minutes here. Yeah. You can be seated out there in your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Well, everything changes today, guys. Everything changes. And there's a few things that we want to encourage you in this life of following Jesus, in this life of looking at him all the days of your life. If you guys want to stay up here, the ones who came up here, just for a couple minutes. They're, they're ready. They're already following Jesus. They're following him at him. A few things that we love to encourage is that every day that we live a life of prayer with the King, that he is a real God man that we can meet and that we can encounter every single day. And what that looks like is waking up in the morning and getting alone with him. It's finding a little precious place within your home, within your car and talking to him. In fact, tonight as I was worshiping Jesus, I, the Lord was taking me back to those precious moments that I had when I first gave my life to Jesus of just being with him and filling the Trinity within my room. And he's saying, Ryan, I'm, I'm calling you back to these moments of just, you know, th this, these, these real deep encounters with Jesus and I could feel it. And so that is available for you guys. He has freely given himself to you, the God of the universe. And number two is to read the Holy Scriptures every single day. It's the Holy Bible. It is the word of God. It is living bread. It is true manna. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. His words give you life. His words sustain you. His words keep you. When you start to doubt and you see the life in the world and things coming at you, you can look at the word of God because that is truth. That is a strong foundation because it's Jesus Christ himself. And number three is to get connected to a local body of believers. You know, th this is what we call church. It's a, that we get to lock arms together, that we get to encourage one another, that we get to hold one another accountable. Somebody that you can talk to in the middle of the night or throughout the day when you need encouragement. And that's what, that's what we're here to do. The Bible says we gather ourselves together in love and good works, to stir each other up in love and good works. And number four is that get baptized in water. We do this here monthly. We set up a tank. And what this is, is this is a representation of us going into the water, speaking of Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit. We get to be baptized into his death, burial, and then we come out of the water, water resurrected, cut off from the old man and cut off from the old woman. The Bible says a seared conscience, a conscience that has been seared by life and by sin our whole entire life. In a moment, he makes it clear and gives you the mind of Christ. In one moment, and that's baptisms are huge. It is absolutely vital for the Christian life. And number five is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says just ask and he will freely give you himself to clothe you with himself, empowerment. It is beautiful. The Bible says that the love of God is shed abroad in the hearts of men and women by the Holy Spirit. The love of God is a reality in our lives when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. It is absolutely beautiful. And we're going to pray that together right now as a church. We're going to agree as the body of Christ with you guys that the, that the Holy Spirit rests on your life. So now you guys could be a witness. You guys all have the gospel within you because you met the man, the, go who gospel, the gospel himself, Jesus Christ tonight. And now you guys could be a mouthpiece for him. Within scripture, people that encountered Jesus, they were immediately evangelists because they witnessed the one. And so you guys all have that in here. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to pray and believe that over every single one of you guys. So let's agree as a church. Let's stretch our hands towards each and every one of these uh, uh, precious souls up here. We're going to believe God that he comes and he comes with might and with power. So Jesus Christ, we thank you for your spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you encapsulate everyone's mind up here. Holy Spirit, I thank you that the love of God will be shed abroad in each and every one of them. I pray your power and a flame over every single one of them in Jesus' name. God, let them witness you and let them feel you. Let them know you, Jesus, even as they drive home tonight. 
as they lay in their bed tonight, as they dream tonight, Holy Spirit, that you encounter them, that they know you and that they see you, that you, you, the reality of who you are is true to them. The cross is true to them. Your life is true to them. I pray in Jesus' name, the breath of heaven over every single one of them. Cover them in power. Clothe them, Jesus, with yourself. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank Jesus for everything that he's done tonight. Thank you, mighty King. Thank you, mighty King. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Well, what a moment. I'd like our team just to rally around these precious hearts here. And I want you to take them back to their seats or at least to their aisle. We would typically have Dion come up, but I just feel like the Holy Spirit's going in a different direction. So help them back to their seats. Welcome them home, family. Would you do that, please? And please thank, please thank these precious vessels. The worship team, would you thank them? <laughs> and hold on, hold on, Steph. Let's welcome Steph. Huh? Uh, she's not a guest here. So. You want to say something to him? Anything? Want to tell him you love him? You do that really well. I, I told you, I've been telling you for weeks, God is moving, God is moving, prepare your heart. And I only invite people who move my heart here. I love you too, and I do want people to move you. But I've discovered if they don't move us, they probably don't move the whole church and few people move my heart like Steph. And so I just want her to feel at home. I want us to receive her as the gift she is. She's a rare gift to the earth, and the Lord has given her to this generation. So let, just let her know you love her one more time. Can you hear me? No. No. You got this one, Chris? There we go. I really love you. This is our second home in your family. I love to worship Jesus with you. I pray that you never, ever treat his presence as common here. Yeah. He is not common. And this isn't normal. But it ought to be. We love you, and the Gretzinger family is what, growing. What do you got going there? <laughs> Very sweet. Yeah. I love you. I love you. It's so good to have you. All right, let her know you love her one more time. Wow, grab a seat. We're just getting started. Do you love the presence of the Lord? Welcome Jenna. Jenna, come on up. Welcome Jenna Reed. receive tithes and offerings today. <laughs> Jesus is in the room. Michael asked me earlier today, he said, let me know when you feel something in the room. I just feel Jesus in the room. <laughs> no, he's enough. He's enough. 
Something I wanted to share what was on my heart is how to respond to him when he's in the room. How to respond when Jesus is in the room. The book of Proverbs talks about to pursue wisdom is the wisest thing that we can do. So I went through the scriptures and something that was highlighted to me was Matthew 2 when the Bible talks about the wise men. Who are these men that the Bible stripped of their names and called them by their character? And I want to read you Matthew 2, verse 10. It says, When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened up their treasure chests and gave to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Pastor Michael explains this so well, what these gifts mean. I just had a baby. I did not want gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I wanted diapers, wipes, and a full night's sleep. <laughs> but they were so intentional. This is what wisdom is. Wisdom is Jesus himself. And when the, these men came and encountered the Lord, they encountered Jesus. Their first response was to worship him, and their second response was to give. So I just want us to pursue the heart of Jesus and say, Jesus, when we come in your presence, when we come in the room, our heart is to worship and our heart is to give. So let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to respond to you rightly tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to love you and give good gifts, intentional gifts, these gifts that see you even as king, these gifts that see you as Lord, that we don't tip you but we worship you and we honor you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And you can give to, uh, text give to that number there on your screen. It's beautiful, Jenna. It's so powerful. Let her know you love her. Would you do that? Yeah. Um, you text give to that number on your screen. If you're in the house, if you're watching online, the same. Same applies to you. If you would like to give by cash or check tonight and you need an envelope, would you please just raise your hand? Okay. Uh, we've got a bunch. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? I took Bruce's seat there for a moment. I was going to back up, Joel. Did you feel my support? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to pray over you before you bring your offering. If you're watching online, thank you for tuning in every week, some of you twice a week, three times a week. We have a Thursday morning live worship set from the school every week. We love you so much, and I just want to uh, encourage you to sow if this ministry has blessed you for the sake of the gospel. There's no one like Jesus. And the people said, let's pray. Father, thank you for all you've done in us. Thank you for all the goodness that you've shown us. So I pray you'd bless your people and keep them as you promised to. You said you would rebuke the devourer. And so I pray that in Jesus' name over your people. Thank you, Father. Glorify the name of your Son greatly in Jesus' name. Bless, multiply, and keep them for your name's sake in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to give by envelope, you can come forward now. We'll be back in just a moment. Bless you.
passion. We love you, Court. I know you're watching. I love you so much. Wasn't that powerful? All right. We've got some good news for you. Got some new images of the building I just wanted to keep before your heart. Uh, how many? There, oh yeah, there we go. That's the, uh, that's with the updated stained glass. And uh, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, I love that. And, and that, that's the stained glass behind the platform. As I said this morning, minus the neon backlights and the smoke. We don't need smoke. Unless it's the Lord's cloud. He can come do what he needs to do. But we don't need smoke. But it's okay. It's okay. It's coming. I love the sanctuary. Isn't that beautiful? It's wonderful. That'll be the home for your children's children. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's go to the next one. That's the Bethany house that is the prayer house. And that is toward the rear of the property. If you look to the left there, you see the big stained glass, the triangular shape one sort of. Uh, that is an image of Mary of Bethany pouring her oil out on the Lord. And it is beautiful. That lake you see is the lake that that prayer house is basically built on. And it'll be a gorgeous, gorgeous place to be with the Lord. I have all, I, since I was a kid, I have experienced the presence of the Lord through His beauty. I, I love creation. And um, there is something special about hearing the Lord and building accordingly. And it's going to be a very prophetic property in Jesus' name. Amen. Go to the next one there. There's the front of Bethany House. That, look at that door. Isn't that awesome? Just looks like the door on the front of a great golf course. But, but this is going to be way better than the best golf course. It's going to be a glorious, glorious setting. Next one. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah? Okay. All right. What else did I miss, babe? Jesus 21 is right around the corner. We are, yeah, there you go. You don't want to miss it. Um, oh, it is going to be amazing. And it's going to be even better than last year. And the people said, amen. amen. If you're watching and you want to come down, get, what am I saying? I know. I got you. I got you. Um, we're running a special. Thank you, babe. We're running a special tonight for the next 48 hours. You get $15 off. So get on it. If you're watching, get on it. Come down here. Snowbirds, come on down. It never gets cold in Florida. This is where you want to be. <laughs> All right. Youth has been absolutely phenomenal. Our young people are encountering the Lord in a beautiful way. I'm so proud of Ryan and Carla and really our whole team who have been who've been leading them so well. All of our Jesus School students. Our Jesus School students have been serving beautifully. Uh, I can assure you of this. You're going to have to search far and wide to expose your children to burning, fiery-eyed ones like this group here. They are something else, and these are the kind of people you want your young people around. I'm so proud of them, and I'm just so excited to see what the Lord is doing. Uh, they are really responding to the Holy Spirit, and what we're hearing is they're just saying we want to be in God's presence. Amen. Amen. It's either the world disciples them or the Lord disciples them. Let's watch the Lord disciple them. So that's every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. If you'd like to bring your children, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful time. Amen. Well, I want, to, uh, I want us to receive communion tonight and see uh, what the Lord will do. Does that sound good? I know He's going to move mightily. I never know exactly what He's going to do. I'm not sure I want to. Thanks. Thank you. So take your Bibles to 
Exodus chapter 12. This is the institution of the Passover. I'm sitting because I'm about 90% healed. I, I did actually did cardio yesterday, pain-free. I'm just not preaching pain-free yet. I can sit and preach. Uh, by, by next week, I'll be ready to rumble. I won't sit on the stool for a long time, unless the Lord tells me to. So in Exodus 12, we see the Passover instituted. And the Lord comes to his people wanting to experience a meal. The Lord comes to the entire nation of Israel, that is a type and shadow of the church here, and invites them to the table. I don't know about you, but I'm extremely grateful to serve a God who invites me to his table and offers himself as the meal. I'll say that one more time. He offers himself as the meal. As Paul Teske said, when God's people, he said this two weeks ago, three maybe, when God's people receive communion, the immortal meets the mortal. The eternal God meets us who are limited. The one who has no weakness meets our weak bodies. In many ways, this is the eternal meal. This is the meal of strength. This is the meal of our covenant. So the Lord comes to his people and says, I want to have a meal with you. As the Lord is judging Egypt, at the close of the judgment, he invites his people to feast upon him. And I, I didn't turn to Exodus 12 to read the entire thing, but I do want you to mark Exodus 12 and slowly read through it tonight or tomorrow. There are a few scriptures that I want to read to you. I'm going to begin in verse 3. And as I begin reading, I want you to know that the Lord is inviting you to his table tonight. Oh my gosh. This is where heaven and earth meet. Did you know there are not two worship services going on in the Lord's eyes right now? There's not one before the throne and one here on the earth. But by the Spirit, the children of God are part of one great processional worship service whereby their hearts cry, worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy of glory, honor, riches, wisdom, strength. Be unto him. There was only one found worthy. We are part of this glorious, glorious worship service tonight. And the table of the Lord becomes the meeting place for heaven and earth. Whatever in your life, whatever is in your body, whatever you're experiencing that you know did not come from the Lord can be obliterated tonight at the table of the Lord where eternity and earth collide, the precious table of Jesus. Speak, verse 3, to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb. Say this, Jesus is personal. I am to receive him for myself according to the house of his father. Say this, Jesus restores family. Mm. He's both personal and the God of family. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Salvation is a personal promise and a household promise. Don't you give up tonight. As you come to his table tonight, I want you to put on your lips the names of those in your household that you are believing to know Jesus. Say, he's for me and my family. Hallelujah. A lamb 
for every household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, I love this, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons, according to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. In other words, while Jesus is vast and massive and a massive God, yesterday we had just so fun, we went, all of us to the beach, and the first thing that struck me was the majesty of God. I haven't been there for a while. You know, if you think that the world's problems are so massive and that you're weighed down by them, I understand that can happen very easily. Life can throw you some curveballs. Go to the beach and think about Jesus. <laughs> Listen to the crashing of the waves, the moving of the currents, and he's got it all in his hand. And it's all functioning perfectly according to the word of his power, the Bible says. All things are held together. He holds all things together by the word of his power. The breeze was hitting us. Oh, I love the coast. It doesn't feel like summer there. It's wonderful. The peace, the power, the majesty, Jesus is massive and vast, but I love this passage. This is amazing. Look at this. And if the, if the household is too small for the lamb, in other words, if there aren't enough people to consume the lamb, as big as Jesus is, he cannot be wasted. He's too good to be wasted, church. You don't get to throw away the scraps. All the lamb must be consumed. All of his flesh. Don't waste Jesus tonight. Purpose in your heart. I will not waste his presence. I will not waste his anointing. I will not waste his invitation. I will not waste his touch. I will not waste his word. Don't you love how protective the Father is over his Son that he purposes here? He must not be wasted. If there's extra, take it to the next household. That's the ministry. You want to minister from overflow. You, want to, you don't want to minister from uh, a parched heart, from lack. You want to take the overflow of the life of the Lord Jesus and just live before people. That's the ministry. Share the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Jesus is perfect. He's sinless. Uh, today we were talking on the way home from church of how painful the passion of Jesus must have been for Mary, his mother, because she knew him like no one else did. Imagine what it was like raising Jesus, <laughs> watching him live a sinless life, knowing he never screwed up. No, not one single time. What a responsibility. He's without blemish. He's perfect. Say amen. Amen. A male of the first year, speaking of tenderness and purity. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day, the same month. Listen carefully. And then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Did Jesus die in private? No. Who killed him? The congregation of Israel. He died in public. Who sentenced him to death? But the congregation of the priests. When did he die? You got it. It's right there. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lentil of the houses where they eat it. I'm sure you've heard this. I've preached on this many times, but... The two doorposts in the lentil, I should be easier if I did it this way. These are the two doorposts on the side of the doors and then on the lentil. So he, there was blood here and then here. I said here and then here. The cross was on every home on the night of Passover, smeared in blood. And that's why weekly I apply the blood over you when we're here. By faith. The word of our testimony applies the blood. Listen carefully. In the book of Revelation, the scripture teaches that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That doesn't mean that every testimony you share is the overcoming power of God. Testimonies are wonderful. The testimony in that scripture 
is pointing to the accomplishment of the blood. So you, what you want to do is put the testimony of the blood on your lips and testify that the blood has been shed and Jesus has overcome. On every home. Verse 8, then they shall eat the flesh on that night. Okay, look back up at me. This is what we're going to do tonight. Jesus is not asking you to merely admire him or to be his fan. He wants you to receive him. Many admire him from a distance. Few consume him. Few bring him in until he becomes one with them. This is the power of the table. Jesus is not looking for fans, as I said. He's looking for a bride. And the bride becomes one with the husband. To the degree, as I've told you many times, that she takes his name. Oh. It shall be roasted, verse 8, shall be roasted in fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs when they eat it. When you roast something, it's a slow cook. It's a slow process. The command was very specific here. How many of you feel the presence of God? I do. Give your attention to His presence, not my words. It's more important that your attention is on Him than this teaching, as important as this is. Don't you love Him? Don't you love Him? When you roast something, it takes a long time to cook. And when you roast something, especially a lamb, I know. I grew up in a Greek town, and I can take you to multiple places where there are lamb, there's a spit of lamb roasting almost 24 7, from 9 to 5. Something happens when you roast a lamb it turns black, it darkens, and that speaks of Jesus slowly becoming our sin. That's the type and shadow here. Also, Jesus died a slow death. I said, Jesus died a slow death. Aren't you happy? Not that he died a slow death, but aren't you happy that he accomplished all God wanted him to for you? So beautiful. Lastly, well not lastly, because this is too good to rush through. When you roast something, you suspend it over the flame. In those days, they would run the lamb through with a pole, and the lamb would hover above the flame. Listen to the, the beautiful picture. See it in your heart tonight. The beautiful pole, the wood, holding the lamb, suspended over the open flames of hell, becoming your sin, so that you would know him forever and consume him, and that he would become your heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Just look at me for a moment. Actually, don't look at me. Look back at your Bible. I've got to read this to you. Verse 21. And then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs. I feel the power of God. Right now, if you have sickness in your body, I want you to offer it to the Lord. Just say, Lord, here's my body. As I'm speaking, even before we receive communion, as I'm speaking, if you have a condition in your body, just, just like a little child, say, Jesus, Father, here's my body. And many of you, while I'm talking, 
are going to feel those, those symptoms leave. And Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families. Kill the Passover lamb. Verse 22. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop. Hyssop speaks of faith. You shall take a bunch of hyssop. Dip it in the blood. Take your faith. Put your faith in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lentil and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. The work of the cross is not gentle. It is thorough, quick, swift, and deep and destroys the power of hell. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Friends, morning's coming. The great and glorious day. This is the commission. Never leave Jesus. Don't leave the house. In other words, don't leave him, the chief cornerstone. Don't leave the one who is the temple. Stay under the covering of Jesus, and the blood will keep you and protect you. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, but when he sees the blood on the lintel and the doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. I declare tonight that the work of the enemy in your homes comes to an end. It comes to an end tonight. All the confusion, all the bitter arguing, all the marriages you think are hopeless, your children who are wayward, Tonight, as you receive the covenant meal, the destroyer will be left out forever. Receive it in faith tonight. Chronic illness, chronic sickness, it goes tonight. All the hell that you're hiding in your home. It's the work of the destroyer. Receive the meal in faith tonight and watch the destroyer go. Watch him pass over. Stop letting him in. Stop letting him in through compromise. Don't you dare. Gosh, steward the environment in your house. Learn to turn the TV off. No more. No more. You come to the meal tonight with a heart of responsibility, knowing that you're priests in your own homes. Even pestilence dwells in these sick environments. Tonight the destroyer is rebuked. May the Lord see the may the destroyer see the blood over your family. I said, may the destroyer see the blood over your family. Oh, gosh. Verse 31, Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks, your herds, as you have said, and be gone. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land with haste. The Egyptians were like, we, are, we don't, your God is so in covenant with you that he's destroying our sinful environment. Get out of here. We don't know what to do with you. You want to be free, but we want you gone. Whatever that looks like, go. That's how the Lord can trouble the enemy. Listen to this. So the people took their dough before it was leavened having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. And now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses. They asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and clothing. On their way out, they said, hey, by the way, give us your money. And the Egyptians were so over it, they said, take that too. Just please go. And that night, listen carefully, that night, look up at me if you would please, that night, the children of God 
were delivered with food in their mouth. While they were chewing the lamb, God said, by the way, gird your belts, tie your sandals. It's time to go. This meal is a deliverance meal. This meal is a deliverance meal. The moment, listen to me carefully, we do nothing, nothing, nothing by religious, through religious, repetitious garbage. But tonight, the moment the elements touch your mouth, you are coming out. You are coming out of anxiety. Listen. You're coming out of fear. You're coming out of depression. You're coming out tonight. Coming out of sickness. You're going to come out of pain. You're going to come out of arthritis. You're coming out tonight. The moment, the moment the elements touch you, you're coming out of Egypt. I said you're coming out of Egypt. God judged. God judged the ten gods of Egypt with ten plagues. And I'm here to tell you, based on the Word of God, that the Lord Jesus has destroyed the powers of the devil and rendered them powerless through the cross, the Bible says in the book of Colossians. Jesus has completely destroyed the work of the devil. Spirit, soul, and body. Beloved, I wish above all things, the Scripture says. This was my dad's favorite Scripture growing up. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Receiving the covenant meal is a major step in renewing your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the word communion or Eucharist means thanksgiving. To be thankful. To remember. Not just mentally, but prayerfully. Remember the Lord's suffering and the Lord's accomplishment. So I want us to prepare the elements now. Let's just take them out. Now the Bible says, listen carefully, the Bible says that on the night they left, listen carefully, there was not one feeble among them. Three million people possibly. Between two to three million. There are three million people in the Orlando Metroplex. That's a massive group of people that poor Moses had to pastor. <laughs> Now you know why he prayed so much. But that entire group of people, not only were there none sick, there were none feeble. There was not a weak 95-year-old in, in that three million. I'm not praying mere healing over you, though I'm going to rejoice in anything God does tonight. I'm praying the strength of God over you. Do you know Moses died with perfect eyesight? He didn't die in weakness. Under a lesser covenant. You say, that's too much for me to believe. He's a big God. He's a big God. There's strength in this meal. There is healing in this meal. There is deliverance in this meal. Jesus is in this meal. Well, the Bible teaches us to judge ourselves, to bring our lives before the light of His presence. And so I want you to take a moment right now and just individually ask the Lord if there's anything in your life, you and your homes, get your communion elements out as well, and ask the Lord right where you are, is there anything in my life, Father, that I need to give you today? Is there anything that I need to make right, to repent of. Now take a moment here, wait on the Lord, and just allow the Holy Spirit to highlight anything.
Thank you, Lord. Now, once he shows you something, these things don't take long, trust me. Just say, Father, forgive me and repent, that's all. Forgive me, Lord. Just turn from it, leave it with him. Now, if there's something between you and somebody in the room, make it right now. You may need to lean over and whisper something. You may need to say sorry. You don't need to go through counseling session now. Just give God something to work with. I'm serious. That's what it means to be a real family in God's presence is we, we, we are authentic before the Lord. We, we are not wearing a mask. We, we bring our strength and weakness to Him, and He becomes our strength where we're weak. Possibly there's somebody in your life who's not in the room. When you know you've, you've offended them, you've sinned against them, or maybe they've sinned against you, this is a perfect moment to send them a text and say, I'm really sorry, or I forgive you. Don't, don't choose unforgiveness over your breakthrough tonight. Choose your breakthrough. It's beautiful. Many of you are texting. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's lift the bread to the Lord. Father, thank you for the blood, of the body of Jesus. Thank you for his stripes. Can you bring those keys down just a little, Joel? Yeah. Thank you for his stripes. Thank you, Lord, that you are our food, the Lamb of God. Thank you for the table of the Lord. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And it's at the table that you hide our weakness. It's at the table we trade our weakness for your healing and for your strength. I thank you, Lord, for your brow that was pierced with the thorns, that you wore our curse on your head, the cursed thorns, that we would have our mind renewed. I thank you for the mind of Christ. All of you need to just be, just pray along with me here. Thank you for the mind, yeah, you just forget about everything right now. The Lord is here so beautifully. Thank you for the mind of Christ. Thank you for thinking your thoughts. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the holes in your hands that redeem our work, that redeem the work of our hands, the work of our life. Thank you for the holes in your feet that cleanse our walk. Those precious feet that they washed at Bethany, pierced with a Roman spike. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you sweat blood in Gethsemane that you chose the cup of suffering so we could drink the cup of the covenant. Wow, what a Savior. What a Savior. Thank you for saying yes to agony so we would know your delight. As we were singing tonight, my God, my joy, and my delight. Thank you, Jesus, for the wounds on your back that heal our bodies. For it's by your stripes we are healed, and by your stripes we were healed. Heal your people tonight. Heal my back. 
heal our minds. Lord, we trade our weight for your yoke that is light and easy. Thank you, Jesus, for the wound on your side that is a doorway to your heart. Thank you, Jesus, that that wound birthed the church. Thank you for the water and the blood that pour forth the washing of the Word, the presence of the Spirit, and the redeeming power of the blood from your precious side that leads to your heart. Thank you, Lord, for your face that was marred beyond recognition, that we would be recognizable at the throne. You were stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Thank you for your lowliness. Thank you, Lord. for offering your beard to those who plucked it and disfigured you, that we would gain your image. What a wonderful Jesus. Now, Father, I declare tonight that there is no sickness more powerful than the body of the Lamb of God. And I pray that as we receive your precious body, that pain and symptoms, conditions would go. Glorify the name of Jesus at the table tonight. In Jesus' name. Let's break the bread because he was broken and received. Dom, would you just come up here and wait next to Joel? Grab a mic. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Just, just close your eyes. Thank him. His power is so wonderful here. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the body of Jesus. Lord, we lift the cup tonight, the cup of the new covenant, the cup of the better covenant. You said that your blood was shed for the remission of our sin. And the covenant is in the blood. That's what you said, Lord, that this is, this is the covenant in the blood. And so tonight I declare the power of the blood over everyone who can hear me. Over everyone who will watch. I don't know why I feel this strongly. But there's someone who will watch it months down the road and the Lord will do the same work in you. That everyone under the sound of our voices would experience the power of the blood of Jesus. And so we all, Lord, we have to do this together, guys. We all plead the blood tonight. Our testimony is of the victory of the blood. For without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin, but the blood has been shed. Thank you for blotting away our sin. Thank you for washing away our sin. And so I apply the blood over all of you over the doorposts and the lintel of your lives, over your bodies, over your families, over your homes, your children, your ministries, your churches. I plead the blood over your minds, over your spirit, over your bodies. The blood of Jesus, the blood has overcome. This is my testimony. 
This is your testimony. And tonight we overcome by the blood. This is our testimony. Jesus, thank you for the blood. The Spirit bears witness of the blood. So as we receive, as we receive, would you just lift one hand to heaven? As we receive the blood of Jesus tonight, I say, Father, we say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Let's receive. Ah, oh, thank you, Father. Just wait there. Thank you, Father. You never want to rush through communion. Thank you, Lord. Just sit there and worship for a moment. Thank you, Father. Can wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole? if you're able. Just sing in the spirit here for a minute. Go ahead. Mm. 
Oh, just lift it a bit, lift it a bit, lift it a bit. Just keep singing, keep singing. Oh, just lift it, just a bit, just a bit. Glory, glory, God. Power and praise. It's all yours. It's all yours. It's all yours. Just about 30 more seconds. Keep singing. you came in tonight with a sickness in your body or pain or in your mind or in your heart, if you need a miracle tonight in any way, sometimes a broken heart is more painful than a broken bone. I want you to lift both hands. You say, I need Jesus to touch me tonight. Just lift your hands, wave them at me. Keep them up. If you're near that person, like right next to them, I want you to look at them and say, is it okay if I put my hand there on your shoulder? But don't do it yet. Just ask them now. Now I want you to ask them what's going on. It should take literally, literally five to ten seconds. Ask them what's going on. Don't lose the moment. You should know now. Yeah. You should know now. Thank you, Lord. Babe, go. You too. Now, in the name of Jesus, we're going to watch this stuff leave. Are you ready? We're going to pray and declare the word of the Lord. You don't, I don't want a conversation. I don't want a deliverance session. I don't want you to help them through the problem. I want you to name the issue that they just gave you and declare the word of the Lord over them and tell it to leave. It's this simple. Go in Jesus' name. So do it right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you that every condition goes. Pick those keys up, buddy. For it's by the stripes of Jesus that we are healed, and we declare that over every person's body right now, over every mind, over every joint, over every broken heart. May the healing power of Jesus Christ flow. Precious Jesus, drive these sicknesses out as you did for Hope, as you did for Jenna, as you did for Jesse, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you are not a respecter of persons. Every sickness goes now in Jesus' name. Every sickness goes now in Jesus' name. Broken hearts be whole, for he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible. All things are possible with God. In the name of Jesus, behold. Behold. Now many of you are going to feel, you do feel the power of God on you. Whether you feel the power of God or not, I want you to try to do something now that you couldn't do before. Maybe you felt your heart totally healed. Maybe you felt the pain leave your body. I want you to step out in the aisle if you have to. Test it out. Test it out. This is vital. Move by faith. Test it out now. Perhaps the Lord has healed the depths of your soul and you haven't felt so liberated. It's been years. It's been years. You need to start giving Jesus praise right now. I don't need you thinking through it. Just begin thanking Him. Begin thanking Him. Knees be whole. Shoulders be whole. Vision clear up. Hearing clear up in Jesus' name. Digestive issues be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. There's someone here who feels fire going through their midsection. Going through their midsection. You've had an issue with your digestion. Be whole. Be whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be completely whole. 
There's a lady in the room, you've been so deeply betrayed and you've been so wounded within and you've wondered if you'd ever be okay. You're so, so hurt. Tonight, the balm of Gilead, the Holy Spirit himself is released upon your heart. Be whole. Be whole. If you feel a change in your body, you feel a change on the inside in any way, I want you to lift your hand right now. You feel like the Lord is, I want you to wave. They're up everywhere. Thank you, Father. I want everyone, lift your hands. Lift your hands if the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want everyone to quickly grab a seat. Quickly grab a seat. If the Lord has healed you or touched you in this section, put your hands back up. Ryan, go, 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 go. There's hands in the back. If the Lord has healed you, I don't want to hear a testimony. I don't want to hear your calling or your prophetic word for the house. I love you very much. But right now is the time to testify of God's healing power. What happened? So I had pain in my stomach for, I think, a couple of years. And I even had spiritual attacks, even if, after giving my life to the Lord. I gave my life to the Lord when I was 12, but I came back about, I think, a month ago. And I still will wake up in the, you know, in the middle of the night feeling like the spirit was holding what me. What happened tonight? Tonight I felt like, you know, I guess it went away. When? <laughs> and, when? Um, when, you know, my friends, all my brothers here prayed. I don't know who, who prayed, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. They prayed for you and you felt it all go? Yeah, yeah. It felt so much better. It's unbelievable. Thank you. I'm so wow. thank you. Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Next, Ryan. Thank you, Jesus. Next, next, next. Now listen, 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 listen. When you begin to testify, the Lord keeps moving. It's the way you honor what He's doing. And when He keeps moving, if you didn't get your breakthrough when we prayed, I just want you to be sensitive to His presence. Just be sensitive. Catherine Kuhlman used to say, if you need a miracle in your body, give your body to the Lord. She used to say, miracles happen when Jesus becomes more real to you than your need. So just give the Lord your attention. And when you sense His presence, I want you to act in faith. That might be, you say, I, I'm, not, I'm not that bold. I want you to be more bold now than you were five minutes ago. That's all I'm asking, okay? Go ahead, Ryan. Oh, so I work for a moving company and I lifted something too heavy. And I You work for who? A moving company. Okay. And my, um, I've had lower back pain because I lifted something too heavy, but whenever um, my boyfriend laid hands on my lower back. I instantly felt it healed. Amen. When did that happen? Tonight? Mm -hmm. Was it during communion or after? Um, when we prayed? When we prayed. Thank God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think there's more right there, Ryan. Was there somebody else right there in that section who had their hand up? I think there was. Yeah, yeah. See how much nicer I am to Ryan now? He used to run back and forth. What happened? Uh, yeah, so uh, kind of the same thing as her. I was, I was moving a large desk. It was heavy. Um, I have back pain from it. And uh, yeah, they prayed for me a couple who, times. Who prayed for you? Uh, my, two, my two brothers here. Awesome. Uh, awesome. <laughs> and Joseph. And, and, and what Jeffrey. happened tonight? Yeah, uh, at first, you know, I felt the pain just dissipate. Then, you know, a little more, a little more. Now I don't feel any in my back at all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look, if you're, if you're watching online tonight and the Lord has healed you, you know what? In fact, let's stretch our hands. We need to stretch our face. Stretch your hands towards the camera. Father, in Jesus' name, let the healing power of the Holy Spirit flow into those homes all over the world. Let the power of the Holy Ghost flow and heal your people in Jesus' name. Set them free in the name of Jesus. If you're watching and the Lord has healed you, I want you to start posting it in the comment feed and I want you to email testimony at JesusImage.tv. The team will post it right now. You must give your testimony to keep you from touching the glory. This is very important. You want to give the glory to Jesus. Ryan, who do we, yep. Who else? Right there, Ryan. There's a bunch over there. Right there. Yep. Sorry, yeah. Right there. Let me um, see. Is that Brooke's niece? Yes. 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 <laughs> what happened? Um, so I've been having really bad, bad back pain where it's been sciatica, where I pinched a nerve, and I wouldn't be able to bend down or bend backwards. Uh -huh. And these girls next to me laid hands, and some guy um, 
<laughs> laid hands on me too. And Doesn't they, matter, does it? As long as the Lord used them. <laughs> yeah, so I tested it out and I feel no pain. No There's pain. How long has it been? Uh, four months. Four months. Since you've been pain free? Yeah. Can you come down? I just want to see you do something that you couldn't do before. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, get that camera on her. Yeah, right there, right there. That's perfect. So you bend down. So you couldn't do that before without pain? Is there any pain now? Thank you, Lord. Now, hey, that... Yeah, the Lord's faithful. He's so faithful. That is... That's Pastor Waldy's granddaughter who leads our choir. What a covenant-keeping Jesus. He's wonderful. Love you so much. It's beautiful. Isn't the Lord wonderful? What happened there? Hey, you came up to give your heart to Jesus. Yes, sir. What's your name? Omar. What is it? Omar. And how old are you? I'm 20. 20. Where are you from? Uh, originally, I'm from Puerto Rico, but I came from Kissimmee. You came from Kissimmee. You gave your heart to Jesus tonight, yes, and he healed you. Yes, sir. What happened? Uh, this, this morning, I woke up with a lot of pain in my ear, and my friend, she prayed for me while we were doing the prayers, right? Um, when we finished, I, uh, the pain was, it went away, but I couldn't hear clearly. But I started listening to everyone's testimony and like er every single testimony I started hearing my, my, my size, my, my, it just. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That is wonderful. Come sit down here, Ryan. I want to change gears here, buddy. Do I have any pastors? Yeah. You did? Of what? A beautiful voice? Come, come. I have not, I have not led worship in the months that I've been pregnant without being in extreme pain wow. because of my back. And I couldn't walk for maybe a day or two afterwards. Oh, no. it's, it's always worth it, but I, I had not an ounce of pain, and I have none now. Wow. Like, I'm, like, I have none. That's amazing. It's the first time? The first time. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You guys are probably wondering why Steph was sitting down, They're like, worshiping. This is not a gluten allergy. <laughs> I am pregnant. She hasn't upped her carbs as of late. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Oh, I love you. I love you, Steph. <laughs> this is not a gluten allergy. I didn't know that happened with gluten. Is there, are there pastors here who came in from out of town? Pastor, hold on. Let me clarify this. You actually pastor. Like you actually have, you ready? A congregation. Okay. Or a missionary. But I've, oh, well, you know what? No. I feel like I'm supposed to focus on a pastor here. Is, is there a pa any pastors who've come in from out of town for a touch from the Holy Spirit so that you would take that back to your city? Right there, there's one. Anyone else? Oh, we've got a group here. Anyone else? I feel the rumbling of the Holy Spirit right now. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, okay. You guys stand up. You stand up. There, you're already standing. You're good. I want everyone... Is, you're not the group from Ohio, are you? Iowa. Iowa. And you got skipped this morning, huh? Now the Lord's going to get you. We prayed for the Ohio people earlier. <laughs> stretch your hands. I want the whole house. Stretch your hands towards, and towards that precious lady there. Stretch your hands. Uh, pick up the keys. A little more, more, more strings. I want everyone to pray in the spirit here for about 30 seconds. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon these people, that you would come upon them in fire, that you would come upon them in boldness, that you would come upon them in clarity, and a love for Jesus and His Word. Father, in Jesus' name, may they fall in love with you tonight like they've never known you. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you, young lady. We pray for this group from Iowa. 
Are you from Iowa too? You too? Where are you from? Jacksonville, Florida. Let the fire of God fall on these people in Jesus' name. Come on, pray, church. This is what does it right here. People come into an environment like this. God touches them. Only the Lord knows what He can do. Holy Spirit, come. Come in power. Come in glory. Use them for your name's sake. Grab them in the depths of their being. Let nothing else do it for them. Only you and your presence in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Receive a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. Right now. Burn for the bridegroom in Jesus' name. Burn for the bridegroom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want everyone in the house to lift their hands right now. Lift their hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands all over the house. Father, in Jesus' name, come on. You got to ask him. You got to ask him. He wants to fill the whole house tonight. Receive, receive, every one of you, receive the power of the Holy Spirit the glory of the Holy Spirit, the precious substance of the anointing. Be anointed tonight. Leave with more in Jesus' name. Leave with more in the mighty name of Jesus. I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you and your families in Jesus' name. You will not leave tonight the same. Father, grab them, possess them, grip them and use them. Come, Holy Spirit. Come on, just yield. That's all you got to do. You don't have to work and beg. Just yield, 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 yield. Wind of heaven, wind of heaven. Touch your people. Fill your people. Heavenly dove, rain fire on your vessels. New wine on your people. Thank you, Lord. Keep playing there. Keep playing there. Keep playing. Keep playing. Keep playing. Keep playing. Keep playing. Keep playing. Come, Holy Spirit. Wonderful Holy Spirit. Fill your people. Clothe your people. We need more. We can't eat yesterday's bread. We need more. More, 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 more. We need more. You have to, this got to come from your heart. We need more, Jesus. We need more, more of your power, more of your presence, more of your word in our hearts and lives. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let this group from Iowa step into a healing anointing because they've been asking for it. In the name of Jesus, do it. Heal the broken in Iowa. Heal the suffering in Iowa. Heal the desperate in Iowa. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord, in Jesus. Do it, Lord Jesus. Come and live there in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I want to pray for the fearful before I dismiss. I just feel that some of you have been gripped with fear. Stand up if you've been gripped with fear, like gripped with it, just completely gripped. Uh-huh. It's perfect love that casts it all out. Jesus, Jesus, pour out your love tonight, the Holy Spirit, the love of God shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Pour out the presence and power of the Holy Spirit here. I rebuke fear in Jesus' name. We, the church of Jesus, rebuke fear. 
command it to go right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. May you have the mind of Christ. You do have the mind of Christ. May you think his thoughts. I heard this today while I was getting ready. I was just worshiping the Lord and I just began to say, we were made to love him. We were made for love. Keep playing there. Keep playing. Keep playing. Precious love of the Holy Spirit fill the people. So you, feel the, you fear the Lord and the Lord alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Babe, would you come up? Would, you, would everybody stand? Before we dismiss, I want Jesse to pray uh, over you. Receive the prayer in faith. Receive the blessing. Go ahead, baby, pray. Yeah. Jesus, I just ask a blessing over these people, Jesus. Holy Spirit, ignite the flame in their heart again, Jesus. Let them burn with first love tonight, Jesus. Lord, break generational things in Jesus' name, Lord. Things that don't belong in their life, break it right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, as Michael was saying, that fear will go in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus over their minds as they rest tonight, over their sleep in Jesus' name, over their children, over their grandchildren in Jesus' name, Lord. I thank you, God, that tonight is a new day, God. And like I've always said, it stops with us, Lord. It stops with us, God, and good things will come from here on out, God. So fear stops with us in Jesus' name. Doubt stops with us in Jesus' name. Lack of faith stops right now in Jesus' name. It will not go on to our children and their children and their children and their children. It stops tonight in Jesus' name. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. All the days of your life, they're good. God has good things in store for you. He has come to bless you, not harm you. He has come to give you his love. He will not hold back his love from you. So Jesus, we receive your love tonight, Lord. We receive your goodness, Lord, your grace, your mercy, Lord. They are new every morning, Jesus. We receive them, Lord, like hungry children, Jesus. Your goodness, Lord, we receive it. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness, God, for your blood, Jesus, for your mercy, Lord. It never changes, Lord. You are so good. Your love never changes, Lord. It never goes away, Lord. So we receive it like hungry children. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I just want to say, thank I felt you, to Jesus. tell you this all. Keep your hearts on the altar Yes. all week. Offer your hearts daily to the Lord Jesus. This next week, Sunday morning and Sunday night, as I've been telling you for weeks, are going to be holy and pivotal for us. I don't want you walking into them without being prepared. The anointing falls on prepared hearts. So take the week in Jesus' name. Love the Lord beautifully and love people and give the Lord something to work with. Father, bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. Give the Lord praise. He's been good to us tonight. Give the Lord praise. See you Sunday morning, Sunday night. God bless you. Love you so much.